A very warm good evening to all of you. Welcome to the 126th session of Centa's webinar series for teachers. I hope all of you are keeping safe and staying healthy. In this session, we will be exploring about uh, graphic organizers. And today for this session, we have Miss Savita Ma'am. Savita Ma'am is a middle level English teacher with over 18 years of experience and has a passion for teaching. Her current accomplishments uh, include that she's, uh, she's an experiential learning campus coordinator. She's also a professional learning community facilitator. She's the center TPO 2020 national rank holder. She's also sent our uh, TQ 2020 digital badge recipient for online teaching and sent our TQ digital badge holder for middle level English. Uh, yeah, middle level English. She's also recipient of innovation awards. Uh, her other interests include video editing, gardening, and swimming. Before we begin the session, I would like to inform all participants that they will receive certificates for the session. So please do fill in the feedback form that will be shared with you by, at 5.45 p.m. Uh, apart from that, I would also like to request all participants to stream their uh, YouTube ad to to 720p so that you are able to view the PPT clearly. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Simran. A very warm welcome to all the teachers and educators present here. Dear friends, I hope you will find today's webinar fruitful and interesting. Let us begin with it. I hope my uh, screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Dear friends, I would like to begin today's webinar with a short brainstorming session on the topic disorganized versus organized mind. Let's hear a story. In fact, I should say a journey from our past to our present. The human brain evolved to focus on one thing at a time. This attentional system is one of the crowning achievements of human brain. And the focus it enables allowed us to harness fire, build the pyramids, discover penicillin, and decode the entire human genome. But a funny thing happened on the way to the 21st century. The plethora of information and the technologies that serve our brain change the way we use it. The information age is drowning us in a deluge of data and it is becoming increasingly difficult to separate facts from pseudo facts. And at the same time, we are all being asked to do more at home and at work. Increasingly, we demand our attentional system to try to focus on several things at once. We all know that multitasking is the enemy of a focused attentional system. But at the same time, unitasking is getting harder and harder to do. The information age now buries us in data coming at us from every which way. We are bombarded with more information than at any time in history. The equivalent of 175 newspapers a day, five times as much information as we took in 30 years ago. And the result is a disorganized mind. Appreciate the creativity of the artist who has presented the disorganization of mind in such a creative manner. Now, dear friends, this disorganization has consequences. Whether it's an adult of our age or a child or a student at any grade level, it impacts us and it impacts us negatively. 
Now, my question to you all is, what are the consequences of a disorganized mind? And I request you to kindly type your answers in the chat box. Whether it's about our health, physical or mental, or it is our work culture, our peace of mind, it has consequences. Yes, confusion, stress. I'm waiting for more responses. Yes, stress, of course. Lack of planning, doubts, loss of focus, attention. It affects our productivity and increases stress, right? Yes, unfinished work. Thank you, dear friends, for such active participation. Let me sum it up for you. This organization causes anxiety and stress. It hinders smooth functioning. It decreases productivity. It kills time. It drains our energy. It creates distraction and even makes us forget things. Arvind Seal very wisely said, the unorganized mind will always be restless until its content is reordered. Dear friends, it is very important for us to reorder the content of our mind so that it remains organized. We all know when there is large amount of information, it is hard for the brain to decode and digest it. But at the same time, comprehending the similar information in a structured way is more relaxed. And we have to learn how to structure and comprehend our information properly. There are many functions, many, many vital and crucial functions that our brain is able to perform only and only if our mind is organized. These functions are finding information, data, and material resources needed to put things in order and get things done, accomplishing tasks and responsibilities that are necessary, relevant, and important, prioritizing the sequence and importance of things that need to get done or taken care of, reasoning with logic, analysis, and the relation of cause and effect to specific consequences evaluating the changing conditions that affect the likelihood of task accomplishment, as well as clarity of thinking. Now, there are so many benefits if our mind is organized. So what should be done? We have to learn the art of being organized. And we don't have to learn it just for ourselves. We have to teach it and train our children, our students. And there is something that helps us in doing so, and that is a graphic organizer. But dear friends, the world of graphic organizer is wonderful. There are so many things to discover and explore. But before we take a deep dive into this wonderful world of graphic organizer, I would request you to answer two questions on a Mentimeter link, I would request Simran to share the link in the chat box. Dear friends, you can also go to www.menti.com and use the code 56696916. Name a few graphic organizers you know. You must have heard about graphic organizers. You must be using some of them in your classroom. Frere model, Venn diagram. Yes, I'm waiting for more. 
any graphic organizer that you have heard or you are using it in the classroom. Okay, let me ask you one more question. The next question that I want you to answer is, write a question you have for the topic graphic organizers. Like when you heard that the webinar is on the topic graphic organizer, you must have had some questions in your mind. You wondered what the topic is about or curiosities. Any question that you have in your mind? Okay, here it says flowchart, Venn diagram, circle map, crossword. These are the names. Um, I would like you to type questions, some questions that you have. Oh, one question also. How are graphic organizers used for? Okay. Okay, how to bring it in the classroom? All right. Savita, ma'am, there are some responses on the chat box also. Okay, so okay. Okay, just one minute. I'll just read the chat box. Okay, what actually is graphic organizer? What is its career? All right. How will it help us? Okay. Thank you, dear friends, for your wholehearted participation. I will try my best to answer all these questions in the course of next 50 minutes or so. Let us carry on, move on with our presentation. What are graphic organizers? These are the visual and graphic display that depict the relationships between facts, terms, and ideas within a learning task. These organizers are visual charts and tools used to virtually represent and organize a student's knowledge or ideas. They often help to clarify or simplify complex information. There are many graphic organizers, dear friends, but a few are there in front of you. T-chart, KWL chart, concept map, storyboard, Venn diagram, etc. One of the biggest benefit of using graphic organizers in our classroom is it can be used in all subjects, whether it's science, social sciences, maths, language, arts, computer science, in all the subjects and at all grade levels, we can use graphic organizers. There are many advantages of using graphic organizers in the classroom. They make content easier to understand and therefore easier to remember. They help students filter information down to what is really important. As I mentioned earlier, there, are, there is a lot of information that is coming to us from all the directions. It plays a very important role as the student is able to filter what is important and what is unimportant. Graphic organizers encourage students to become more strategic in their learning, which will help in their future studies. They help students display their understanding of taught material and therefore can provide useful assessment information to inform planning. When a teacher looks at a graphic organizer filled by a student, at a glance, he or she can find out if there is any learning gap, if there is any misconception, and immediately feedback can be provided, reteaching can be planned, or remediation can be given. It also improves focus as they help students organize their information and see relationship between ideas. There are so many benefits of using a graphic organizer. Some more are here. They provide a means to categorize cumbersome amounts of information. They guide students to categorize key concepts. They enable students to isolate the most significant similarities or differences. They help brainstorm ideas, especially as part of a group project or plan. One of the other important thing about graphic organizer is it can be used in pair or in group. And when children are working
small group. They communicate a lot with each other. They collaborate. They become creative. They do critical thinking. So here you see graphic organizers also help in developing 21st century skills in the students. They include sequencing events, analyzing cause and effect, comparing and contrasting, and developing concepts in detail. There are many graphic organizers and there are many templates. While teaching a topic, an organizer is selected according to the objective of the topic that is being taught. And in this way, they help in various functions. There are a few points that we have to keep in mind before introducing graphing organizers in our classroom. And the first is the design of the graphic organizer, the template that we are going to choose. The graphic organizer must be constructed to generate the level of thinking which is required for the desired learning objective. The design should lead students to thoughtfully analyze the content. The design of the graphic organizer must align with the learning goal and require that students apply the information they deconstructed in order to make meaning or develop unique insights. Graphic organizers make learners engaged. They feel more responsible for their learning they feel energized as no child is left behind. Everyone is engaged, everyone is thinking, everyone is writing. They collaborate with each other and they do their work in a strategic manner. But there is one more point that we have to consider, we have to keep in mind before introducing it in our classroom. And that is to understand why they are using a graphic organizer. Ask your students while they are working on a graphic organizer, what are you doing and why are you doing it? Dear friends, quite often we see that children know what they are doing, but they do not know why. This why is very important. Be mindful to design the organizer with the end in mind. Communicate this goal to your learner and ensure that the structure of the organizer requires students to make connections between content, achieve broader understandings, and perhaps even ask further questions for continued research and reflection. Whenever a new knowledge is gained, a new topic is learned, it gives birth to more questions. And to get answers to those questions, more research is required, more reflection is needed. So we have to understand using a graphic organizer is not the end. It is a process that motivates more learning, more reflection. And when the students are comfortable in using a graphic organizer, they understand the template very well, then it is the time to take the next step, a step forward. And that is to make the students the designer. Motivating the students to construct their own visual representation would develop the higher order skills of evaluation, determination, and judgment. Students would reflect upon their learning and how to display their thinking. It would enhance their grasp of concept, promote critical thinking, and provide flexibility in presentation. It would also provide a formative assessment to the teacher to check for understanding surface misconceptions and gaps in their understanding. Let us discuss a few graphic organizers in detail. The first organizer in today's list is KWL chart. KWL chart is used for gathering information from students prior knowledge or experience. This three column chart captures the before what the learner already knows, during, what the reader wants to learn, and after, what the reader learned stages of learning. How to use KWL chart in your classroom? Step one, get students to brainstorm around the selected topic and write down everything they know about it in the K column. 
asked them to generate a list of questions about what they want to know, what do they wonder, in the W column of the chart. Step three, during or after reading the text, lesson, topic, whatever they are doing, get them to answer these questions in the L column. Let us understand the procedure of introducing this graphic organizer in your classroom step by step. Choose the topic that is to be taught. It might be a textbook, but doesn't need to be. Just some topic at their level. Create a KWL chart on the whiteboard, interactive board, or chart paper. It can be used any way you wish. Students should have their own charts to follow along and to be more engaged in the activity. Introduce the topic as well as walk through the text and model how to read the headings, captions, and bold-faced vocabulary. Students can record on their individual charts under the K column, the words, terms that they already know. That is their prior knowledge. After students have had some time on their own, ask them to share their knowledge and record it under the K column on the class KWL chart. Ask students to write three to five questions that they might have about the topic on their individual KWL chart in the W column. Ask students to share some questions they may have and record it on the W column. The W column gives the students a purpose for reading, motivating students to continue to learn and be engaged in their learning. After the completion of the topic, ask students to use the L column on their individual charts to record five to seven concepts they learned while they read. Ask students to share again with the class the concept they learned. And while sharing, the teacher will record the findings on the class KWL. So here, the teacher is working on the class KWL chart where she is writing the responses after brainstorming and after getting the uh, responses from all these students. And at the same time, all the students have their own templates and that is why they are engaged and they feel responsible for their learning. At the end, model a think aloud. Make the students mention the prior knowledge, K, and compare the questions, W, with the concepts learned, L. Highlight or stress if some of the questions weren't answered. This way, students will realize that they need to monitor their own comprehension and learning better. Dear friends, if you remember, I asked you two questions on Mentimeter. Name some of the graphic organizers you know and write down some of the questions and curiosities that you have, some questions whose answer you want to know. That was actually an effort to make you understand how to introduce KWL in your classroom. At the end of the webinar, we will review whether you received all your answers or not. And if there is any question that remained unanswered, I would try to give you the answer. So this is, uh, this is an example how to introduce this graphic organizer in your classroom. Now let us see a few examples. This graphic organizer is computer science, grade seven. Here the topic is HTML. The students already knew, they had already some prior knowledge about the topic how to create a table in HTML, how to use the properties to change the appearance of a table in HTML. They wanted to know something. This can be the learning objective of the topic. The topic can be very specific. How we can merge cells in rows and columns in a table in HTML. And after the topic was completed, the students wrote the answers. Let us see more examples to understand it better. The next one is English Literature, Poem Slum Children at Play by Ruskin Bond, Grade 6. Before reading the poem, the students only knew what slum area is, but they had many questions in their mind. And after completion, the students wrote their answers. Another example, 
is of Pythagorean theorem. Dear friends, this is a digital template. We will talk about digital templates that are editable, printable, downloadable. Towards the end of the webinar, we'll discuss it in detail. Here, I have taken this template from Canva app. There are many templates present there, which can be used as it is, or it can be edited and changed according to the requirement. Another example is physics, grade 11. The topic is electromagnetic waves. What did the children already know? Their prior knowledge that is mentioned in the first cake, uh, column. What did they want to know? That is mentioned in the W column. And the last one, what did they learn? That is written in the L column. Now here you have to see, we can add images as visual representation is always easier to understand and easier to remember. So this kind of modification is always allowed. The next one is biology, grade nine. Kingdom, fungi, what I know, what I want to know, what I learn. So in this way, children feel more responsible towards their learning. And the teachers also at a glance can find if there is any learning gap or any misconception. And immediately, remediation can be provided. The next graphic organizer in today's list is Frere model. The Frere model is a type of graphic organizer that uses a four square model to determine, clarify, and analyze word meaning and structure. In the center, Voc vocabulary word is written, and then we have four squares where definition, characteristics, examples, and non-examples are mentioned. Now, as I said earlier, modifications are always allowed. They are always possible. According to the need of the topic that is being taught, we can make modifications in our template. So here you see there is another template where Picture is also added and sentence. If it's English word or like any language topic is going on, sentence can be added. Word like part of speech can be added and similar words and opposite words can be written in one box that can be divided into two parts. When is it appropriate to use a fair model? This graphic organizer is most appropriately used when teaching lessons in word analysis or introducing new vocabulary terms in text or in content. The Frere model can be used at any grade level or in any subject matter instruction. The Frere model teaches vocabulary by teaching synonyms, antonyms, examples, non-examples, and characteristics or attributes of the word. How to use the Frere model in your class? The Frere model can be used in whole group, small group, or in one-on-one -on -one instruction. Content area instruction in science, social studies, and maths can also use Frere model in bring beginning of a unit to teach new vocabulary word. Friends, it can be used in any subject where a new concept or a new vocabulary word is to be taught. Let us understand the procedure step by step. Introduce the Frere model. Tell students they will learn the new vocabulary with a graphic organizer called Frere model. The Frere model is a four square model that will help students think about the word from four different angles. Display the Frere model slide or poster. Point out the four sections on the slide. Read or call on students to read the heading in each section. Ask students what they think will be written in each section. That will promote a lot of brainstorming in the class. Point to the center. Restate the heading word. Tell student they will write the new vocabulary word in that section. Point to the upper left hand corner. Restate the heading definition. Tell students they will write the definition of the word in that section and explain that they will need to use a reference tool such as a dictionary, textbook glossary, 
or an online dictionary. Next, point to the upper right hand corner, restate the heading, characteristics, facts. Tell students they will list the characteristics, traits or qualities of the vocabulary word to help them remember the meaning of the vocabulary word. Point to the lower left hand corner, restate the heading examples. Tell students they will list examples of the vocabulary words and can also list synonyms according to the requirement, according to the objective that we have in our mind. Point to the lower right hand corner, restate the heading non-examples. Tell students they will list non-examples of the vocabulary word and can list antonyms. Review the purpose, components and activities students will do when using the FRAIR model. Here these activities can be individual activities, group activities, uh, pair, like think, pair, share, any kind of activity, interesting activity can be planned by the teacher. Student can turn to a partner to describe the components and activities. After all the discussion and all the explanation, pass out the FRAIR model graphic organizer to students or ask them to draw their own FRAIR model in their notebooks or A4 sheet. It is necessary that all the students have their own templates so that they remain engaged throughout the process. Tell students you are going to show them how to complete the graphic organizer. Display a vocabulary word. We have to show them one example. Instruct students to follow along and fill in their FRAIR model handouts as you complete the class graphic organizer. Again, one organizer will be filled by the teacher, that is the class graphic organizer. And along with the teacher, students will be filling their own graphic uh, organizer templates. Model a think aloud for the remaining blocks. You may also ask students to work with a partner. Ensure students are following the steps of the strategy and using the procedure accurately. If students aren't following the routine appropriately or are off task, simply guide them back to the expectation. A little hand holding is needed. Fill in any missing information if there is any and encourage students to complete their graphic organizers. Let us see a few examples. So here again is a digital template that has been created on the app Canva. The topic here is area. It's grade five maths definition. In fact, the formula is written example and non-examples. The next example is English, grade seven. The vocabulary word here is tyranny. Definition, facts, examples, and non-examples. Now here, the student have included synonyms and antonyms along with examples and non-example. Here, they have mentioned some of the rulers who were tyrant. And in non-example, they have mentioned some of the rulers who were democratic. So in this way, uh, with example synonyms and with non-example, antonyms also are included. The next example is history, grade eight. The vocabulary word here is assassination. And again, children have written the definition, facts and illustrations, examples, and synonyms. Now in example, they have mentioned some of the powerful people or political leader who were assassinated. In the non-example, they have mentioned some of the political leaders who died a natural death or death because of some other reason, but not assassination. So in this way, their concept becomes clearer. The next one is Hindi grade five, where the vocabulary word is ekagrata, earth, Vakya, Samanarthak Shabd, and Vilom Shabd are mentioned in four uh, columns. The next one again is a Hindi example. It is for any primary class, whichever class the children are studying Kriya, Paribhasha, Ped, Udaharan, Gair Udaharan. So as I told you, uh, dear friends, modifications are uh, allowed. And in all subjects at all grade levels, it can be used, any graphic organizer. Now here we have another example, English grade nine. 
And here, the concept is a figure of speech. Whenever we teach a figure of speech, non-examples play an equally important role as examples. Because here, children have to understand the difference. So this is a very highly recommended uh, graphic organizer while teaching figures of speeches in example. All the example of metaphor are mentioned. And in the non-example, there are example of different figure of uh, speeches. In this way, the child will understand the difference. Now, this is a modified version of the FRAIR model. It is called problem solving FRAIR model. Here, instead of the vocabulary word, problem is mentioned in the center. What do I need to find? What do I need to do? Means what do I need to do uh, to find what I want to find? So a lot of brainstorming, how I solve it, my answer and how I know it's right. So the child is reflecting after finding out the answer, he's reflecting whether his answer is right or wrong. Let us move on to the next graphic organizer. The next graphic organizer in our today's list is mind map. A mind map is a free-flowing depiction of thoughts that branch out from a central concept. The visual organization of the diagram promotes brainstorming of ideas, effective note-taking, stronger retention, and impactful presentation. Mind mapping ranges from simple to elaborate and may be either hand-drawn or computer-drawn. Depending on the purpose and time, the mind map can include artful, purposeful elements like pictures, drawings, curvy lines of varying thickness and multiple colors. There are so many benefits of mind mapping. It enables meaningful learning. It helps with memorization and retention. It is a more engaging form of learning. It makes Complex issues easier to understand. It ignites creativity and it improves writing skills. How to draw a mind map? Ask students to define the central concept in one to three words and place it in the middle of their page. Ask them to place the ideas around it as labels, boxed or unboxed, with lines radiating out from the central concept, they may use short labels, even a single word, and keep branching out with each idea level. Use pictures if that fits the time and purpose. Pictures and illustrations can make the map more memorable. As we all know, dear friends, that visuals are remembered and understood easily. Ask students to use different colors for each level of idea, creating visual organization. If they are hand drawing, they may use color pens or a single multicolor pen. They might also use a hierarchy of label sizes and line thicknesses. Ask the students to draw lines curvy or straight, whichever works better for them. They can have a lot of creativity. They can do whatever they want because there are very few rules, as it is mentioned in the next uh, line, students will develop their personal style based on how they draw and think. There are few rules around mind mapping, so they can use their creativity and imagination. Start simple if there is time constraint. Whether they are hand drawing or computer drawing, they can add to it later. Collaborate by sharing and editing the mind map online. Dear friends, the biggest mind mapping benefit is its flexibility. Mind mapping benefits people of all ages. Anyone from first grader to a university student can use and benefit from this versatile technique. Let us see a few examples. This is grade six descriptive essay. And here this mind map has been taken as a pre-writing activity. Quite often we see when children are writing longer compositions, such as an essay or a letter, they fall short of ideas. Sometimes they do not know how to organize their ideas in different paragraphs. In such situation, mind map proves to be very beneficial. 
Here you see the student has done a little doodling here. And that is why it is it has a personal touch. The topic of the descriptive essay is car exhibition. So the main branches that are coming out are paragraph one, paragraph two, three and four. Since it is a descriptive essay, the child has also talked about senses, his sense, like what did he see? What did he smell? How did he feel? And then so many other information after a lot of brainstorming. Once this kind of pre-writing activity is done in the class, such mind map is drawn, writing composition becomes much more easy. The next example is, a mind map drawn as, again, a pre-writing activity to write a higher order thinking skill question. Whenever a higher order thinking skill question is asked and the child has to write the answer, a lot of brainstorming is required. And then organization of idea also becomes important. Drawing a map helps children to write a proper hot answer. The next example again is uh, here this map, mind map is real. The topic here is formal letter. Again, it has been taken as a pre writing activity. Now, here you see the main ideas that are branching out are address, formal tone, complimentary close, name, salutation, subject, body. First, the students were asked to think aloud and share all the problems that they face while writing a formal letter. And they discussed it. They talked about all the confusions they have, all the problems they face while they are writing. And then they were asked that on the basis of those confusions and problems, they have to find out solution. So what can they do? How can they draw a mind map? Here, we have to give the children liberty to use their creativity and imagination. And wherever they need some guidance and hand-holding, that can be provided. Now, here you see, one of the branch that is like projected here is body. And then further, it has been divided into three parts. First paragraph, second paragraph, and third paragraph. And what are the important things to write there? After drawing this kind of mind map, writing a letter becomes, it becomes fun and it becomes easy. The next one is chemistry, grade seven. The concept here is acid rain. The four main branches that are coming out are man-made causes, natural causes, effects, solutions. And then there are more ideas that are added there. This is a digital uh, organizer. That is why pictures have been added. Visuals make the concept easier to understand and easier to remember. The next graphic organizer is Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is an illustration that uses circles to show the relationship among things or finite group of things. Circles that overlap have similarities, while circles that do not overlap do not share those traits. Venn diagram help to visually represent the similarities and differences between two concepts. This is an example of a digital uh, graphic organizer Venn diagram that has again been taken from Canva app. We can merge more than two concepts. There can be three concepts also. And the overlapping area has, it talks about the union, the similarities that are there. Let us see a few examples. Physics grade six, this Venn diagram is compare and contrast of lunar and solar eclipse. The other one is grade seven biology prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells so both of them have certain similarities like they have cytoplasm ribosomes cell membrane dna some have flagella these are the similarities so that is written in the overlapping area and the differences are mentioned uh, outside that, that area so it is chemistry grade nine Asset versus basis. Again, here a picture has been added, an image has been added to help students understand the concept in better way. The last graphic organizer in today's list is cause and effect map graphic organizer. 
The cause and effect organizer helps to figure out the causes and effects of certain events. The student must be able to identify and analyze the causes and the effects of the event or process. In this process, the student realizes how one step affects the other. Let us understand the procedure step by step. The way to use it is to start with a main event, which fills the main central section of the map. From the main section, other connected shapes stem out to the left and right. The shapes to the left represent the causes that help the event happen. The shapes to the right are the effects of the chosen event. Let us see a few examples here. Event is acid rain. The causes of acid rain are exhaust from factory, power generations, facilities, automobiles. And the effects are acid rain removes minerals and nutrients from the soil. Monuments get corroded. It causes respiratory issues in animals and humans. Dear friends, when we introduce any graphic organizer, we should keep it simple. Later on, it can be elaborated more. The next example is chemistry, grade six. The topic here, the event here is air pollution. Now, this is again a digital template that has been taken from Canva app. So there are various variety of templates there which can be used as it is or it can be edited. It can be done by the teacher as well as the student. The next one is a little bit modified version of cause and effect. Here, the topic is urbanization. Subject is geography, grade eight. Here, you see that the effect, the impacts have further been divided into positive impacts and negative impacts. So any such modification is always possible according to the requirement of the topic which is being taught. The next example is grade eight, history, renaissance. Causes and effects. The next example is again from subject history, grade eight. Formation of UNO. The event is formation of UNO. The causes are mentioned and the effects are mentioned. This is one more example of a cause and effect map graphic organizer. This template has been taken from Canva app. Let us talk a little more about graphic organizer. We all know the importance of Bloom's taxonomy in learning and teaching. Graphic organizers link to Bloom taxonomy as they require different levels of thinking. For example, for remembering and understanding, one could use a simple flowchart or a simple concept map as these are great tools for helping students to remember and understand a certain concept or a topic. For higher levels like applying and analyzing, students could use graphic organizers that allow them to compare two or more concepts, ideas, using either a two-way or three-way Venn diagram. This allows them to see the similarities and differences between the concepts. For further, when we go higher in Bloom's taxonomy for evaluating and creating, the graphic organizers allow students to be able to evaluate a process such as using a cause and effect fishbone graphic organizer, which is little complicated or they can also use a cause and effect chart, which is simpler. So again, it depends upon the grade level of the student. Dear friends, there are so many more graphic organizers and there are so many more templates, but we have limited time. Still, I'm just sharing a few templates with you here you can see there is a basic word web graphic organizer, which can be used at any grade level. In the center, word is written, definition, synonym, sample sentence, functions of that word, vocabulary word, 
uh, which part of speech it is or figure of speech it is, whatever is required, antonyms and part of speech. This is called a basic word web graphic organizer. The other one is the helpful hamburger. Here, this graphic organizer help primary and pre-primary children who struggle in writing the paragraph when paragraph is introduced to them. So here, it's a very interesting graphic organizer. Children would enjoy filling it where they, are, they can write topic, then introduction, supporting sentence one, supporting sentence two, supporting sentence three, and conclusion. And after filling this uh, graphic organizer, their paragraph is ready. As I promised you earlier, let us talk a little bit about digital graphic organizers. In distance learning, more than ever, students need support that can work for them in completing reading, writing, and other learning tasks independently. By using graphic organizers digitally, you can save paper and give students many options to customize and personalize their work. These all are apps that are that uh, they have lot many templates that can be downloaded, printed, or edited according to the requirement. All the graphic organizers that I used in today's presentation, they have been prepared on Canva app. Some were already there and some were created there. Canva is a very user-friendly app. You can explore it. You can design anything that you want to design. There are other apps like MindMeester, Bubble Up, Bubble Us, Popolet, iBrainstorm, Concept Board, Storyboard, and there are so many others you can explore. There are uh, some more benefits of using a digital graphic organizer. Digital graphic organizers can be used on all devices and with many free apps, websites, and programs. They can be shared with a link embedded in a website or downloaded as an image file. In short, digital graphic organizers are more versatile. When done, the students can save their work as image files or PDF files and can add those images to documents, slides, and spreadsheets. That uh, brings us to the end of this presentation. And I would like to read this quote, which I find very meaningful. We are approaching a new age of synthesis. Knowledge cannot be merely a degree or a skill. It demands a broader vision capabilities in critical thinking and logical deduction, without which we cannot have constructive progress. And I feel, dear friends, that by using graphic organizer, we can very easily teach these skills to our children. That's all from my side. That brings us to the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you, Savita, ma'am. Uh, for this wonderful session. I would request the audience to please type in their questions now. Uh, I Actually, I have a few questions that came in earlier. Uh, Savita, ma'am, uh, I'll just summarize a few questions for you. Uh, firstly, uh, how do we use graphic organizers in a pre-primary classroom, uh, like a, a nursery KG prep preparatory classes? How do we use a, a graphic organizer in in those classes oh. yeah okay uh, simran i would like to just give one very simple example like we all know t chart okay t chart is also a kind of graphic organizer where children simply draw a line and they write on the both side of when, when say word uh, like opposite okay or when we say differentiate so like if it is primary class or pre primary it depends upon the teacher like which template she is using and she can simplify it according to the need if they are drawing a mind map, like I would like to give an example. Let's take a word, neighborhood. Now children read about neighborhood, all right. So they can write neighborhood in the center and they can draw branches. What are the things they see in their neighborhood? So they'll talk about it and they'll write. So here the teacher has to use her creativity and imagination and simplify any graphic organizer. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I think that answers the question. Another question that um, I, it has popped up quite uh, 
quite a few times in the chat box is how do we use a graphic organizer in uh, class 11 and 12 english subject yes like i gave you examples first of all if there is if it, it is according to the requirement if they are uh, doing a class on um, like writing or okay, a longer composition mind map can be used if they are talking about any complex topic concept map can be used Com concept map is little bit different from mind map where we have linking word where, where it does not go only in one direction but it has like um, uh, it relation linking words are written there then i showed you some example of frere model because even in higher classes children learn new terms new vocabulary so frere model can be used where they are writing about the examples and non example cause and effect they can always use whenever it is a science uh, like a class or a social science class so it can be used in all the classes the teachers have to explore it and they will find that graphic organizers can be used in any class any grade level uh suma ma'am wants to know uh, because time is a factor when we are talking about such activities can we replace note writing with uh, you know adding graphing organizers for students see um i will not say we can replace it but yes uh, when we are using graphic organizer the other kind of work written work can be reduced a little because see basically our motive is to make the children understand okay so we can create a balance it is not necessary that every time we are using a graphic organizer wherever we find that is it is necessary and it will really help the children understand then of course it can be added there uh taruna ma'am wants to know can we uh, can you please share an example of a mind map or a concept map that that can be used for a story and she also wants to know for a story do the mind map uh, should we draw the mind map before or after the narration see um, for story that we have another very good mind map uh, like graphic organizer that is called a storyboard okay like here the question is that what actually is our objective to understand our story or to write a story if we are talking about writing a story then definitely mind map will help and if we are talking about understanding the story okay then there is a graphic organizer that is called a storyboard that can be explored uh there is a request for sharing of uh, various websites that can be used i think ma'am shared it at the end of the ppt yes. so uh, we can uh, uh silvia ma'am wants to know when do we introduce the graphic organizer before or after the uh, teaching portion of the session that depends upon our lesson plan okay the topic that we are teaching let's suppose we started a topic and now we have some new terms coming in so as those terms are coming those concepts are coming accordingly we can use like there is no such set rule that we have to use before or after uh, this decision teacher will take okay while the teaching uh, learning process is going on wherever there is uh, like a uh, requirement at that time it can be introduced there is no such rigid rule regarding the introduction i think that's the end of all the questions oh there are there is one more purnima ma'am wants to know if we are you, if you are just a second ma'am if we are using any kind of graphic organizer then is it possible to check for each and every student what if someone had done mistakes which left which were left unnoticed so uh, that is why i said that a lot of brainstorming and i mentioned think aloud if children are thinking aloud like if they are discussing with each other if they are collaborating communicating and the teacher is present there she is guiding she is hand holding the children so first of all the chances are fewer and even checking like looking at a glance is not that difficult like when we check our copies question answer i feel checking a graphic organizer saves time and it is easier and uh, and otherwise peer checking also can be done even that is an option like if some time really time is very less so peer checking and peer feedback also can be done uh simran you are on mute 
you are on mute sorry uh, there's a question by mr amit aman kumar and he asks is the graphic organizer more effective than the teaching the traditional teaching method in primary sections uh, actually it is not uh, an alternative it is not an alternative we are teaching it's a tool that we are using so we don't have to like use it as an alternative it is a part of our teaching process uh alka ma'am wants to know how we can use a graphic organizer to do formative assessments of course we can use graphic organizers for formative assessment see what is formative assessment when we teach a topic or a specific uh, part of our topic we need to know whether children have understood it or not all right so when the child fills a graphic organizer and the teacher just looks at it at a glance if there is any misconception if there is any re uh, reading gap learning gap it is very much clear visible there and then and there the teacher can give uh, like remediation um, if the teacher feels that most of the children have made the similar mistake it means reteaching is required so these are all forms of formative assessment i think that's the end of the questions uh, there are a few questions re regarding the webinar feedback etc which i will answer now uh so to get the certificate please uh, we have posted the link to the feedback form please do fill in the feedback form the feedback code is 9345 uh, if you fill, uh, fill the form by 9 pm today you will be able to get your certificate tomorrow for those people who want the ppt for the session please write to team@centa.org i am adding the email address to the chat box uh, now uh for more such webinars you can visit m.center.org and register for the same you can also refer your friends who are teachers to join in uh, my uh, my center platform and you will also get referral points for the same uh, i would also like to thank uh, savita ma'am for a very wonderful session what i see in the comments uh is that it was very uh, informative and something that uh, was explained very well to the participants uh thank you so much ma'am for taking the time and uh, doing the session with centa i would also like to thank all participants for joining us today i uh, it's we are very proud to see that more than 1000 people for the past two sessions have been joining us live uh, uh, it's a great a great achievement for us and the facilitator who is presenting so uh, thank you audience and thank you ma'am we will uh, close uh, this uh, simran uh, simran yes. i just want one minute just one minute i would also like to thank team center i'm very really glad and feel privileged to be here and all the participants very active participant and i would like to thank my principal ma'am a very special person dr mrs vinita kamran it is all possible because of her motivation and encouragement and i feel very blessed to be working under her guidance so thank you very much ma'am thank you team center thank you ma'am and we'll close the session now i am posting the link to the feedback form again on the chat box for participants uh, ease uh, thank you ma'am thank you audience and with that we will close the session for today thank you